So in digital painting, you, you kind of just layer up your pixels. You can use your layers really any way you want. Sometimes you start with a sketch, sometimes you don't. So I show you in the assignment how sometimes you'll just primarily use one photo reference and then just match it exactly. In fact, some digital painters, they do what's called rotoscoping, which I don't want you to do because it really limits what you can learn. But rotoscoping is when you take the photo and then you just make that the layer underneath your painting and then you just paint directly on top of it. But that really limits your ability to, to add your own interpretation, right? So I, I don't actually like to work just from one photo. I like to work from several. And I often like to, to modify that photo reference to begin with. So I have a few links here to slides that can help. And photo painting is anything that is shape and color based, you know, instead of primarily line based. So this is considered a painting, right? Now this is not done digitally. This was done in 1968. This is by Milton Glaser, who's one of my like art heroes. But you can see kind of his sketches and then his colors, and he just does it with watercolor, right? But you can do these exact same things digitally. And then all you're going to post for this is the primary photo reference you use, whether it's an animal from head to toe or whether it's a person from the shoulders up. And then you're going to post your digital painting. We're just going to leave the backgrounds blank, though some students choose to fill those in. And I'm going to start by posting my primary image reference that I want to paint. And it's going to be of my cat and of my cat licking himself. Right there he is in all his glory. Because it's an interesting shape and an interesting composition. But before I post it, I might as well clean it up a little bit. This is just in preview. I could also do this in Photoshop. Use auto levels, play with the midtones, brighten it up, sharpen it, darken the darks without losing pixel content, right? So make it, you know, pretty good photo reference. And then what I do is I open this up in Photoshop and I'm going to do more than just my primary resource, though that's all that's required. I'm going to create a canvas size. It's going to put this in the upper left hand corner. I'm going to make it, let's say, 60 inches. I don't know. I'm just going to make it a lot bigger by, let's see, 140 inches white. So it gives me a lot of space to put more. And then I have these other images. So let's see, here's his face. This is my cat Bigby. Get some personality there. This is one of him from above lying down. And obviously, you can have lots. And even though this is what I'm planning on painting, all of this will help me in terms of kind of colors, in terms of texture. Uh, I might detail his head a little bit differently, you know, based on reference. And then you have stylistic references you might like. So I really liked this digital artist and their use of warms and cools. This is a, using kind of a pastel brush, so I might throw that in there. I really like this digital artist who makes silkscreen prints with their digital art, and it's just super basic. Just three ink colors on white paper. And then we had these ones, right? The AI. If I want to dress it up with some, some random shapes, a la Gustav Klimt and Alphonse Mucha. And then, like this reference that I liked, some of these, these colors can be helpful too. And then if I'm really feeling bold, I might even use some of my compositing skills and like, 
take something like this, overlay it on my cat, and then play with different blending modes, right? Ooh, I kind of like that. This is compositing when you're layering up different images on top of each other, right? So maybe I like something kind of like that. Take a little screen grab of it. Play with the screen grab. Bring that in. And I can play with adjustments. You know, all the things we've been learning, you can make use of here. I can really saturate it just to give me an excuse for putting some color into this. Because a black and white cat maybe isn't the most interesting, right? So this gives me some, some color reference I can use. That kind of brings together some of these influences. So now I have, now I have a lot. A lot I can use. And I can kind of push them all together. Make it a little bit more efficient. Okay, so now this will be my reference. You will need photo reference for this. So I'm just going to crop it. I'm not going to be very precious with it. And I'm just going to save it as a JPEG. So save a copy, and this will be my name. Assignment 7. Painting reference. Not even saving it as a PSD. <clears throat> now I also really like Miyazaki cats. And that's from Kiki's Delivery Service. Or other animated cats. And that might go into some of my thinking as well, because you can stylize abstract any way you want. In the presentations, Mike Mignola was mentioned. I really like Dave Stewart, his colorist, and these kind of blocky shapes. That's kind of an inspiration too. So there's, there's no end to the kind of inspirations you can use. And then we'll just see where they take us. Okay, now, what's next? Got my inspiration. It's right there. I'm going to post it to Canvas. So I would like you guys to post at least one photo reference for your project so you're reminded of what you're working on. And then we're going to set it up for painting. And there's two approaches for painting. One is to start with just shapes just pure paint all the way. Another is to start with kind of a loose sketch. Remember, they are very different than digital coloring, which relies on clean line art. So I have these slides, the exhaustive explanation of uh, digital painting. And these are kind of the two ways you can go about it, either with just paint or with a sketch. And I'm probably just going to use straight paint for this. And we'll, we'll revisit some of these. But you get to pick your own stylization. I kind of use dragons as a theme throughout here. This is a lot of cool digital paintings online of dragons. So this is one that uses a sketch. This is one that uses pretty clean line art, but then it gets overtaken completely as digital painting. And it doesn't actually need to take long to get something with a lot of personality. So, 
How do we set it up? We're going to open a new file in Photoshop. We want this to be print quality, so I'm going to make it 11 by 14 inches. As long as it's at least 8 by 10, you're fine. By 350 pixels per inch. Then I'm going to bring my photo reference image right onto the canvas and just tuck it into the corner. Pretty small. Just like that. That allows me to be able to steal colors from it. And I'm going to lock it. And I'm also going to lock my background. And I'm going to name it blank white. Just like in digital coloring. You want to start with a blank white layer that you don't touch. Then I'm going to duplicate that blank white. And I'm going to fill it with middle gray. Because the problem is if you paint on only white, everything you paint is going to be a little darker than you want it to be. So 50% gray, I'm also going to lock that, is going to help you balance out the lights and darks. You might have noticed that when you did digital coloring, mm -hmm. that that was helpful. Next, I'm going to make a layer on top of that. I'll turn off the gray layer for now, and I'm just going to call this my shape sketch. Now, to do a shape sketch, there's a few ways I can go about it. I could rotoscope. And this is a really simple way to rotoscope. Whoops. <laughs> I'm going to kind of scroll up and zoom in on my primary reference right here. I'm going to get off the crop tool. It's a dangerous tool to be on. And I'm simply going to move my shape sketch above my reference, my shape sketch layer, and I'm going to use the paintbrush tool. Now we've used this for digital inking which is solid black. But now I'm going to customize my brush. So if I go to the brush settings, you'll see we have soft round, hard round, soft round, pressure size, hard round, pressure size. That's a typical one I use with a tablet. You know, it goes thin to thick. But notice that it's all very hard edged. So we use it with digital coloring. We use it with digital inking. But I want to customize my brush. I might want something that's a little bit more like these brushes, the, dr the dry media brushes that come with Photoshop, right? That give me some texture. Now I can take the ones that are built in. Whoops. Or I can actually make my own. In the next video, I'll show you how you can make your own. But for now, I'm just going to use one of these as a starting point, I'll use the Happy HB, which is just trying to be like a pencil, right? Has that texture built in. But I'm going to customize it under Window with Brush Settings. And Brush Settings is this little indicator here. And if you click on where it's checkered, this is what really matters for making it a more believable paintbrush. You're going to play with the size jitter. You're going to play especially with the angle jitter and the roundness jitter. That means that it's not always the same every time you use it. You see how the vary, it will vary a little bit? And then instead of it being, I want the size to be based on pin pressure, right? And I might want to take this texture down a little bit or open it up. Maybe I'll even open it up. You can play with it here. And then you can play with your smoothing if you want. But basically smoothing is either turned on or off. Okay, the problem is with this brush is it's not going to give me really fine detail. But it's good for a shape painting. So how do I start? I'm just going to use option. I'm going to pick a color and then I'm going to start just kind of roughing it in. And because the edges of the brush are soft, even though I'm at 100% opacity, 100% flow, they'll kind of flow into each other a little bit. They're kind of overlapping each other. So this is rotoscoping, and this is as much rotoscoping as I would ever want you to do so that you're not just painting on top of your photo to get anything other than just a shape painting start. And I'm using a really chunky brush. I'm just trying to get some of these colors in there that I think I might want to use. <clears throat> 